Hello good people. Welcome to ECS 1501. That's economics 1B. To be specific, it's microeconomics 1. In this module, we are going to focus much on the behavior of the economy as a whole. We gave a distinction between micro economics and the macroeconomics when you are doing ECS 1501. We say the microeconomics focuses on a smaller picture and macroeconomics focuses on a bigger picture. And here is the bigger picture. As you are going through this module, you have to master all the concepts that I am going to disclose here, which concepts are going to help you come exam time. I do believe that if you pay particular attention to all details, you are going to make it simple. Okay. Now, here are the topics given on the table of contents that one needs to know. The first topic focuses on production income spending in a mixed economy. We had a look on this topic under ECS 1501. Then from topic 2 going forward, this seems to be new topics to you. Though new as they are, but they are easy. Prepare yourself and let's go. Now, as we progress, I want to show you what is critical in this module. Because what you have to understand is all the concepts that are important for one to pass this module. The prescribed book that one has to use is this one which is called uh, More, Koma, Van Zyg and Pretorius Full Stop 2018 Understanding Microeconomics, Understanding Macroeconomics, Second Edition, Pretoria Van Van Sheik. This book can be found on UNISA official bookseller. Okay, that is not important, but what is important is that if you want to read more, you have to look for this book. This is the book that you are expected to use. Um, without wasting each other's time. Let me move to the critical issues of this module. Okay, um, this part which is written understanding graphs, understanding graphs. We use diagrams mostly in macroeconomics to try and explain the relative effect of variables. Graphs helps us to simplify economics ideas. So if a graph is drawn, you should be able to label it clearly on both axes, be it x-axis and y-axis. We know that the x-axis is the one that is horizontal and the y-axis is the one which is vertical. And two variables can be presented on the graph. Like under microeconomics, you used to explain the law of demand using the graph where we would put price on the vertical axis. Let me draw the graph of demand to help you recall this zero here, then this side quantity demanded. And this side is the one which is called x axis. This side we would put price, and this side is called is the one which is called y axis right in the demand curve would say it's downward sloping from left to right like this label it d right so this one would show the relationship between price and quantity demanded so that's the importance of graphs and this is how we have to draw the graphs in economics be it microeconomics or macroeconomics and as i said under macroeconomics graphs are very important so understanding of graphs is of paramount importance. Again, we should be in a position to explain these graphs. For example, we should be able to tell the 
a relative impact of price on quantity demanded if price increases suppose initially price was p1 and quantity demanded was q1 now after a price increase from p1 to p2 let's see what happens that's explaining now an explanation will go like this an increase in price from p1 to p2 will result in decrease in demand from q1 to q2 that's explanation so graphs are easy to explain you just telling what you are seeing or what has happened after a change okay uh, again you should be in a position to read uh, this means you have to understand the determinants or factors of each curve um, and how they affect the specific curve okay like with this one the determinant of demand because it is the demand which is being studied and if we are under microeconomics so the determinants include price that's the one we have here but that's the this is not the only one we have income we have expectations we have advertising we have population and composition that's under microeconomics the recap of microeconomics because we know that macroeconomics is an aggregation of the economy as a whole we're going to observe that some of the aspects that we looked at under microeconomics should will form part of macroeconomics okay let me now introduce you to the first topic introduction to um the macroeconomy as i said by macroeconomics we simply mean the behavior okay macroeconomics is the branch of economics which focuses on behavior of an economy at aggregate level or of, or at its totality thus looking at aspects like inflation unemployment economic growth external stability current stability all those are the aspects that macroeconomics attempts to address and under microeconomics we have to, to know the economic agents the economic agents that we encounter under macroeconomics include households firms the financial sector the government sector as well as the foreign sector so this basically means that there are five economic agents and each and every economic agent has its role that it plays in an economy households and firms we looked at this under microeconomics we know that households play a role of consuming goods and services and they supply factors of production firms they are the ones that produces goods and services and supply those goods into the goods markets and they buy factors of production in the resource market these are the roles of the first two economic agents there is no difference uh, between what we explained under microeconomics uh, and macroeconomics regarding to how the behavior of households and the behavior of firms but what we did not explain under macroeconomics are the three are the last three economic agents that's financial sector the government sector as well as the foreign sector you're going to get you're going to know how these economic agents operate or behave here <clears throat> okay uh now without wasting your time i would want to descend on the three major flaws the three major flaws in the economy The three major flaws in an economy includes you can say peace it's an acronym that's P4 production 
first floor second income then lastly spending or expenditure These are the three major flows in an economy. What these flows tells us is that um, the main objective in an economy is to produce goods and services, right? So that's production. Under production, we are looking at the methods that are being used to produce goods and services, the resources that are being used in the production of goods and services, and what those resources obtain in return. So if we are checking at return now, that's income method. So these are the methods of calculating national income, so to speak. The question can say methods of determining or measuring national income. We're going to encounter this topic as we progress. So under the flows that occurs in an economy, these are the only three. That's production flow, income flow, mm, spending flow. Production goods produced are the ones that are now sent into the goods market by firms. And firms pay factors of production 